Today, let's talk about a new topic: Border Gateway Protocol (BGP), which includes multiple course sessions. In this course, we will describe the basic concepts and principles of BGP and basic BGP configurations. Let's start with the basic concepts of BGP. An autonomous system (AS) refers to a set of devices that use the same policy and are managed by the same organization. For example, Company A has a data network that consists of various types of devices, such as routers, firewalls, and switches. All these devices reside in the same AS. An IGP, such as OSPF. It's used in AS to implement data communication. The definition of ASs evolves along the continued development of data networks. For example, its company A is a large transnational company. Each of its subsidiaries can be planned in an AS. The IGPs used by the subsidiaries can be different. An EGP is required between ASs. To implement root interworking, when an AS needs to access the public network, a public network AS number is required. Traditional AS numbers are two bytes long and range from one to six five five three five. The AS numbers from six four five one two to six five five three five are private AS numbers and cannot be used to access the public network. In addition to the two-byte AS numbers, there are also four-byte AS numbers. According to the working scope, dynamic routing protocols are classified as IGPs and EGPs. IGPs work inside an AS. Typical IGPs include RIP, OSPF, and IS-IS. EGPs implement route exchange between ASs. BGP is a typical EGP and is widely used. BGP exchanges routing information between ASs. It can carry a large number of route prefixes and is commonly used in large-scale enterprises or on financial networks. BGP can be easily intended to support not only IPv4 prefixes but also IPv6 route prefix. Or even multicast root prefixes. In addition, BGP has powerful routing policy capabilities and defines various root attributes, which makes it easy to operate. BGP has path vector characteristics, except for routing policies and path attributes. BGP is similar to RIP because BGP also directly transmits routing information between routers. BGP requires peer relationships to be established between routers to exchange routes. On the network shown in the figure, five ASs form a large network. Each AS is composed of many devices. To simplify the topology, only one router is shown in each AS. BGP runs between the ASs, and a BGP peer relationship is established between R1 and R2. Between R1 and R3, and between R3 and R4, in AS100, there is a route 10.1.0.0/16. When sending the route to R2 and R3 through BGP peer relationships, R1 adds path attributes along with the route prefix. BGP has various path attributes, such as the AS path attribute. That indicates the list of all ASs through which BGP route passes. For example, after R2 receives the route, it adds its AS number 200 to the AS path. The AS path is used to determine the optimal path and prevent routing loops. Next, let's talk about characteristics of BGP. First, BGP uses TCP as the transport layer protocol. A TCP connection must be set up before a BGP peer relationship is established between two routers. In addition, BGP peers do not need to be directly connected as long as the IP addresses 
of the two routers are reachable and a TCP connection is established based on TCP port 179. Second, each router running BGP is called a BGP speaker. BGP is classified as eBGP or iBGP. Third, after a BGP peer relationship is established, only incremental update is advertised upon a root update, or a triggered update is implemented. Now, let's talk about types of BGP messages. BGP messages have a common BGP header, followed by the BGP message content. BGP messages are encapsulated with a TCP header and then an IP header. BGP messages are classified into five types, open, update, notification, keep alive, and root refresh. Open messages are used to negotiate the parameters of BGP peers. Update messages are used to carry BGP routing information and advertise root updates. Notification messages are used to notify peers of detected errors. Keep alive messages are used to maintain peer relationships and confirm parameters in open messages. Root refresh messages are used to instruct peers to refresh BGP routes. The BGP finite state machine FSM has six states idle, connect, active, open send, open confirm, and established. A BGP peer relationship starts from the idle state. A router attempts to establish a TCP connection with a peer end through the three-way handshake mechanism. The router searches the local routing table for a route to the peer end and sends a TCP packet to enter the connect state. In the connect state, the router sends another TCP packet. If the TCP connection is not set up after the three-way handshake is performed, the router continues in its attempt to set up the TCP connection and enters the active state. If the connection is set up successfully, the router sends an open message, the state becomes open sent, and waits for confirmation from the peer. If the peer ends response to the open message with a keep alive message, the state becomes open confirm. When both ends receive keep alive messages from each other, they establish a BGP peer relationship. BGP peers are classified as eBGP peers or iBGP peers. In the figure, R1, R2, and R3 are in the AS100, and R4 is in AS200. A BGP peer relationship is established between R1 and R3 and between R3 and R4. R3 and R4 are eBGP peers because they reside in different ASs. R1 and R3 are IBGP peers because they reside in the same AS. Next, let's talk about a routing black hole problem in the transit AS. As shown in the figure, six routers are deployed in three ASs. BGP runs on A, B, E, and F, but not on C or D. OSPF runs on B, C, D, and E, although B and E are not directly connected. A BGP peer relationship can be established between them. In AS65101, A imports the root 1.1.1.0/24 to BGP and advertises the root to B through BGP. OSPF runs in AS65102, so B and E are reachable to each other. In this case, B advertises the route to E by sending a packet. The packet traverses either C or D, which transparently transmits the packet to E. Upon receipt of the route, E transmits the route to F. If F wants to send a data packet to 1.1.1.1, it first sends the data packet to E. Because B is not directly connected to E, E performs root iteration and sends the data packet to C or D. 
However, BGP is not enabled on CMD, and they do not have the root 1.1.1.0/24. Therefore, this packet is discarded, causing a rooting black hole. To prevent such a problem, BGP provides a synchronization rule. That is, when a BGP router receives a root from an IBGP peer, the router does not use or advertise the root to eBGP peers unless it also learns the root from an IGP. However, this rule is rarely used and is disabled by default on devices of many mainstream vendors. One solution to the problem is to import all BGP routes to OSPF. However, this is not advisable because doing so will cause the links in the transit AS to be heavily loaded. Another solution is to run BGP on the entire network. In the example, you can implement fully meshed BGP connections by also deploying BGP on C and D. The third solution is to deploy MPLS to implement label switching. MPLS will be covered in subsequent courses. Next, let's talk about an important rule: IBGP split horizon rule. To prevent rooting loops, which is a severe problem, rooting protocols have their own anti-loop mechanisms. For example, RIP has split horizon. And poison reverse mechanisms. OSPF uses the SPF algorithm to prevent routing loops. In BGP, each route carries an AS path attribute, which can be used to prevent loops. Specifically, if the AS path contains the local AS number, a loop occurs and involved route is ignored. The AS path can also be used to select the optimal route according to the length of the AS path. However, the AS path changes only when the route leaves an AS. Therefore, the AS path cannot be used to prevent routing loops within an AS. To address this problem, BGP has its own split horizon rule. That is, if a BGP router receives a route. From an IBGP peer, it does not advertise the route to other IBGP peers. However, this rule may lead to another problem. For example, if BGP is also running on C and D, C does not send to E a route that has been transmitted from A to B and then to C. As a result, E does not have the BGP route to implement route interworking. You also need to set up a BGP peer relationship between C and D, and between B and E. If there are a large number of BGP routers in this transit AS, the link load is heavy. There are two solutions to the problem: root reflector and confederation. Details will be provided later. Now let's talk about root advertisement. One. When multiple routes to the same destination are available, the BGP router selects only the optimal route. Two, BGP advertises only the routes used by itself to its peers. Three, the routes learned from eBGP peers are advertised to all BGP peers. Four, the routes learned from iBGP peers are not advertised to other iBGP peers. Five, when a BGP router receives a route from an IBGP peer and a previously mentioned synchronization rule is enabled, the router does not advertise the route to eBGP peers unless it also learns the route from an IGP. If the synchronization rule is disabled, the router advertises the route to eBGP peers. Six. BGP sends only updated routes upon a route update. Next, let's talk about how to configure BGP. First, we need to create a BGP process and specify an AS number and router ID. If no BGP router ID is set, 
BGP automatically selects a router ID in the system view as the BGP router ID. You are advised to set a BGP router ID manually. Next, configure a BGP peer. BGP peers need to be specified manually using the peer as number command. You can also specify the source IP address for establishing a BGP session with the peer. After a BGP peer relationship is established, BGP routes are advertised. Note that routes must be added to BGP before they are advertised through BGP. Routes can be imported to BGP routing table using the network import route or aggregate command. The third command is not described in this course. Let's talk about how to import routes to BGP using the network command. Here is an example. There are four routers in the figure. R1, R2, and R3 reside in AS123, and R4 resides in AS400. OSPF runs in AS123. A BGP session is set up between R3 and R4, and between R1 and R3. The following BGP configurations are for your reference. After the configuration is complete, run the following command to check the BGP routing table of R3. You can also run the following command to view the routing table of R3. The command output shows that the preferred BGP route has been added to the IP routing table. There are several important tables related to BGP. BGP peer table, BGP routing table, and IP routing table. The BGP peer table displays information about peers and BGP routes. In the BGP routing table, the optimal route is marked with a left bracket flag, and valid routes are marked with an asterisk. In addition, multiple BGP path attributes are displayed, such as next hop and mat. Next, let's use an example to explain why a source IP address needs to be specified. In the figure, R1, R2, R3, and R5 are in the same AS. An IBGP peer relationship is established between R1 and R3 through directly connected interfaces. If an interface or the direct link fails, the BGP session is interrupted. However, the IP connectivity between R1 and R3 will remain unaffected because of a redundant link R1 to R5 to R3. To address this problem, you need to specify the source IP address. Specifically, connect R1 and R3 through loopback interfaces so that the BGP peer relationship is established between them through the loopback interfaces. In this case, the BGP session is not interrupted even if the link between R2 and R3 fails. Next, let's talk about how to configure the eBGP multi-hop feature. To establish an eBGP peer relationship using loopback interfaces rather than directly connected interfaces, or to establish a multi-hop eBGP peer relationship. Increase the hop count using the eBGP max hop parameter. The involved command is shown on the slide. In this example, you need to perform the following configurations when loopback interfaces are used to establish an eBGP peer relationship. Finally, let's look at the BGP routing table. The command output shows all path attributes and related parameters. That's all for today. Thanks for listening. 